in Cleveland, Ohio. Brian, welcome to the line of fire. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. Here's my question. Uh, me and a yep. good friend of mine are scheduled to sit down um, with some Hebrew Pentecostals next week and discuss um, some of their theological beliefs as far as the dietary laws and the Sabbath being binding for today. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't believe that's true, obviously. Um, so in order to understand their views better, I went online and I listened to a guy named Pastor Jim Staley. I don't know if you ever heard mm-hmm. of him. Sure. Okay. He, he's pretty much saying the same thing, that all these laws are binding for Christians and that you're sinning if you don't keep them. And his argument is, uh, in the book of Genesis, Noah, God gave Noah a concept of unclean and unclean animals, um, even before the law of Moses. And he said that in Matthew, in Mark 7, where Jesus said, thus he declared all foods clean, it was already established what real food was, and Jesus was just talking about the defilement of food by dirty hands is still clean. And, you know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but he was saying that. Oh yeah, those you know, those are the, those are standard, yeah, standard arguments that 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 camp would use. Uh, no, it's, it's it's absolutely not true. Uh, number one, God uh, only gave the dietary laws to ancient Israel. He never judged the ancient nations, the surrounding nations, for eating pork or things like that. He judged Israel. He judged the surrounding nations for murder, for for uh, breaking covenant. Go to Amos and, and read through Amos. You'll see uh, the chapter 1 and the first verses of chapter 2 deal with surrounding nations. And God judges okay. them for covenant violations, right? When you get to Israel, right. God judges Israel for specific breaking the law uh, and, and, and certain things that were not required for the nations. So that's, that's number one. Number two, what's interesting in Genesis is it does not use the same terms as used in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Those terms in Hebrew are tameh and tahor, which is clean and and unclean. Uh, Excuse me, I said them backwards. Tahor is clean, tameh, unclean. In Genesis, it's tahor and lo tahor, clean and not clean. It's expressed in a different way. What's, What's most logical is that it was animals that were acceptable for sacrifice and animals that were not acceptable for sacrifice. It says nothing there about whether they could be eaten or not. And what we do see is this. In Genesis 9, this is what God says. Genesis 9, verse 3, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is blood. And the, the word for, for food is not some specialized word, okay, um, you know, that is just talking about, uh, um, you know, it has to be, it's, it's established, acceptable food. No, it's just what's eaten. That's all, that's all the Hebrew means. But Genesis 9 is quite explicit, all right, quite explicit. Oh, okay. The diet, right, uh, and then when you get into the New Testament, Mark 7 and Matthew 15 are specifically talking about whether if you eat with your hands unwashed, that defiles the food. And Jesus was clearly saying, whatever you eat doesn't, doesn't defile you because it's what comes out of your heart. What you eat goes through your body. So if, if I ate something, I'm, I'm eating only totally healthy by God's grace for many months now and it's a lifestyle. But if I ate something unhealthy, it wouldn't defile my spirit. The thing itself, I mean, disobedience would, but yeah. it wouldn't defile my spirit. It, it would, it would hurt my body. But if if I if I thought a greedy or angry thought or gave place that or lustful thought, that would defile me. So it's what comes out of the heart that defiles. What comes into our mouths does not defile. Now the New Testament is also quite explicit in other passages. In Romans the fourteenth chapter, as Paul is dealing with issues having to do with dietary laws. Now, these scriptures are known to those you'll deal with, but I'm saying that they are absolutely misinterpreting them. Uh, Paul makes plain that nothing that you can eat uh, is in and of itself uh, unclean. If you think it's unclean, it's unclean to you. But Romans 14, 14, uh, Paul says this, I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. So he doesn't even say no food there. But nothing. So, so uh, 
a, a particular thing that you're going to eat because that's the context. In and of itself, it's not clean or unclean. And he says, he says, as one who's in the Lord Jesus, that's Romans 14. 1 Corinthians 8 is also relevant because we can be quite sure that food that was sacrificed uh, in idol temples was not sacrificed according to any type of Jewish ritual. And in, in point of fact, uh, it was all kinds of foods that Jews wouldn't eat. Yet Paul's telling the, the believers there in Corinth that if they're served food that was sacrificed to an idol, and no one says that it was, because you don't know in the meat market where they got the food from. And a lot of it was sacrificed to idols and then sold in the meat market. And Paul's point there is, hey, you don't know. If you don't know, don't bring it up uh, because it's, it's not an issue. If you know, then you don't eat it. But otherwise, it's just food. And he says this, 1 Corinthians 8.8, 8, food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. And that's even for food that was sacrificed to an idol. And then lastly, 1 Timothy 4 is relevant. They will claim that the uh, everything created by God is good, nothing to be rejected if it's received with thanksgiving. It's made holy by the word of God and prayer. They would say made holy by the word of God. That means the foods that were sanctified. No, rather made holy by the fact that God gave them to us. Everything created by God is good and nothing to be rejected if it's received with thanksgiving. So there's no question that New Testament believers, especially Gentile believers, were never put under the dietary laws. But with that, I got to run. If you want to read more, get my book, 60 Questions Christians Ask About Jewish Beliefs and Practices.